Well, we're waiting for this to warm up. Really excited to um, be here to give the first sneak peek of my brand new science poetry book. I got started in this uh, gig of science poetry back when I took an entomology class for grown-ups, kind of a summer camp for grown-ups, and um, we're coming. Okay, there we go. Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, so um, I was learning about insects, and I was really taken with the idea that insects are these little packages of information, kind of um, full of survival devices, like hiding and attacking and eating and reproducing. And I thought to myself, I was already writing, but I wasn't writing poetry. Boy, I'm really buzzing. Huh? Um, and poems are these great little packages of information, too. And I thought, well, how about the combo package? Let's put them together and see where we get. Should I maybe turn this down? Yeah, it's really lovely. Right. Right. Yeah. So um, I thought I'd put poems and insects together, put those two little packages together, and see how it would work to try to hone this science information down to get it in a nice little elegant poetry package. So my big idea for Hey There Stink Bug was to talk about insect adaptations. And my big idea for my next book, which was At the Seafloor Cafe, was to talk about recent discoveries in ocean <coughs> science, because that the field is just growing in leaps and bounds. And then, um, I, as I write these collections, I make each poem about a different critter, and each poem in a different form of poetry, some known form and some that I make up myself. And I put a lot of thought, thought into talking about and thinking about uh, what forms of poetry to use. And I also really try to focus on grossed out humor because I'm sort of using my inner 10 year old and I do this to amuse myself. And I want to sort of address that kind of grossed out humor. So with Hey There Stink Bug, I had to sort of come up with all of the printable synonyms that I could <laughs> for uh, bug excrement. So we have dropping and traps and this and that, and of course the old favorite poop in that poem. And then with, hey, with uh, At the Seafloor Cafe, I talked a lot about guts and gore. I talked about slime and mucus and all this great stuff that you could find in the ocean. And I even got to use words like shark chewed slop, so that was really fun. And I thought, okay, now what am I gonna follow this up with? What? Um, great, uh, as a science educator, what great subject can I come up with that's going to have that great juice of gross out humor? And I thought, I know, body parts. So I don't want to steal any of Andrew's thunder, but uh, the body parts have great gross out potential. It's kind of like the display window of the gross out department, really. And I thought, okay, uh, kids actually know something about body parts. They know where they are, they know what a lot of them do. So I decided to make it riddles to make it a little more challenging. And riddles are a really wonderful vehicle for kind of using uh, higher order thinking and critical thinking skills and kind of the same skills you use in science. So it seemed like a great mixture to put those together. So I started to think about poetic form. And I, when I was writing Hey There Stink Bug, I would tell people, oh, I'm writing a book where each poem is going to be about a different insect and each poem is going to be a different form of poetry. And people would say, oh, I know, you're going to write a haiku about a Japanese beetle. And I'd say, well, yes. <laughs> but I have to come up with some other ideas, too. And so I wanted to come up with what would be the sort of obvious connection like that with human body parts. And I thought, well, a sonnet about the heart. So then I thought, well, I've written sonnets in my other books before, but I wanted to actually make it even more interesting and take a particular Shakespeare sonnet and write my sonnet, not just in the rhythm and meter of a sonnet, but actually following the pattern of a particular sonnet. So I took, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? <laughs> shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So long as, I don't have time to knit it all thin, sorry. So long as men can read and eyes can see, so long lives this and this gives life to me. So that whole poem is a metaphor, and these are the you know the poetic devices that I'm using, like the devices of the insects. These are the poetic devices that I use to make the poetry rhyme, rhythm, meter, 
alliteration, this, be this beautiful metaphor. So I thought, okay, what's my beautiful metaphor going to be for the heart? Sonnet number four. Shall I compare you to a clenched up fist? You are more blocky, shaped more like a cone. Rough handling pounds a fist upon its wrist, but you're protected in your cage of bone. Sometimes you're compared to two fist size. Young bodies do get bigger every day. But soundly, you'll deliver your supplies and lazy fists relax and fade away. Within your rooms, the hubbub never ends. Two doors swing open wide, two others slam. On this, the very stuff of life depends. Fresh visitors surge in as others scram. So long as there is breath and eyes can see, your heart at work, not in a systole. <laughs> so all of my poems have science notes along with them. And I thought, hey, that wasn't hard at all. That was pretty easy. That was really fun. What's my next one going to be? And I started thinking, um, you know, I'm going to connect them all to Shakespeare because that really wasn't very hard. So I'm going to do the next one. And I'm thinking about, I have, you know, little favorites in Shakespeare. And one of them is the witch's speech from Macbeth. And you have this image of a cauldron. And I thought, ah, that's going to be the stomach. Lunchtime. Thrice the empty pot has whined. Thrice times thrice the cavern gapes. The signal comes, tis time, tis time. In the cauldron mix and stew choice ingredients for our brew. Flesh of fowl ground into hash. Blood of berries bled from ash. Wheat paste wet with human spit. Plant parts mangled bit by bit. Grumble, grumble, royal and rumble, acid burn and slurry tumble. <laughs> Lumps of lard from fatted swine, shellfish innards laced with brine. Spuds unearthed from mud, then fried. Mucus oozed from deep inside. Milk that soured into curd, four pyrigmus roars are heard. With a pulverizing rumble, churn and thrash the slushy jumble. <laughs> so, how are those appetizers doing? <laughs> so, so then I thought, okay, um, now what's my next one going to be? Oh, okay, this is a little harder. This is getting a little harder, and then it got a lot harder, and it got a lot harder, and some of the connections got a lot looser and a lot looser, and um, I came up with things sort of more along the order of this. Reduce, reuse, recycle. The heart is strong, the heart's first rate. It pumps to make blood circulate. Blood carries food to every cell. Blood carries oxygen as well. Cells take blood's gifts to work and grow, then send their waste to join blood's flow. Soon, nutrients and wastes are mixed. Blood's careful balance must be fixed, or cells will bathe in fatal brew the next time blood comes coursing through. But who can keep this precious blood from fouling up with toxic crud? Blood needs a candy super filter who won't let blood blend tilt off kilter. Tuning ingredients on the spot. Good stuff, stay in. Out, out, bad rot. <laughs> so, so you see that there's a science note with everyone. That making this a riddle book was kind of a challenge because with many riddle books, you have to turn the page to get the answer, or you turn the book upside down, or the answers are in the back. These riddles are hard. So we have the answers kind of on the page, and of course this one gives it away too because it's a... Um, shape poem. But the next one, I'm going to ha have you guess. Through thick and thin, all that shivers deep within, like liver, kidney, and its twin, intestine, brain, and sharp-edged shin, must have this cloak to swaddle in, this organ with the discipline to keep muck out and fluids in, protecting all through thick and thin, producing healthful melanin in swatches where the sun has been. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Great. So um, I, the last poem that I'm going to share, how am I doing good? <laughs> the last poem that I'm going to share <laughs> um, posed the biggest design challenge for this book. This book just went to the printer a few weeks ago, and uh, it, this, it hasn't been shared anywhere, anywhere yet, so you're first. Um, I don't actually have the book, you know, I just have it in PDF form. but. Um, this next poem that I'm going to share, oh, I, you know what? I, I took my puppets out and hid them from myself. Sorry. Anyway, um, it's a poem for two voices, and this is a very thin trim sized book, so it was hard to have the space to have two voices plus when they speak together. So you're just going to have to imagine my hands as the um, two voices for this poem. 
These make sense. Actually, Connie, you come here. <laughs> you can be the one that's on the left in the bold, okay? So you raise your hand when I'm reading the bold line. Can you tell us the difference? I can't. I only had half of This is part of the design challenge. It's making this really look like they were different voices, okay? Oh, but wait. <laughs> and we'll give you a little extra time for this. So is red bold too? Red is when they speak together. So we're both going to be waving at the same time. <laughs> All right, okay? so let's carry on. Okay, so <laughs> well, these make sense, but you're up first. Our back end's plumpy. We're all thin. We wait to work when light comes in. We're on the job for dim night vision. We're the masters of precision. We all stand up against the wall inside our gooey jelly ball. We're into red and green and blue. Black and white is what we do. And shapes of things, more light, more 